free bet up to fifty pounds. Bet your way at betway.com. What a very courageous fight Ooh, under all the circumstances, the and uh, uh, I'm very, very proud of him uh, for what he accomplished what, tonight. Watch your feet, sir. I Please welcome you know, Eddie Pacquiao, and then we'll hear from Freddie Roach, and you can ask questions. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming here. Uh, I did my best. But my best wasn't good enough. Anyway, I would like to thank all the, to all the people who came here to witness the, uh, the fight tonight. And, um, you know, I don't want to... Uh, uh, make uh, alibis or reason anything what we have been through this uh, training camp but you know it's good I mean I'm happy because uh, 12 rounds I, uh, I fought a good fight and uh, you know uh, I thought uh, I thought I, I I won but I have to review it uh, and then DVD now. I'm going, I'm going back to, to my hotel to see if um, you know what's uh, what's happening. So, um, what else? I want to thank you to all the media and press for for helping promoting this fight. And uh, many people around the world uh, knows this fight and they're watching for this fight. So, thank you for for everything what you have done helping to us, promoting this fight. Of course, I want to thank God for everything he has done to us. And a uh, smooth fight, and uh, everything is fine. No, no trouble for this fight, so thank you. And uh, uh, we owe you a lot. Thank you. I have a pleasure to bring to the microphone Freddie Roach. Ready? I'm very proud of Manny. I thought Manny fought a good fight. Yeah, I think he hurt his opponent a few times. He's landed some really good combinations. And Ever Mayweather was pretty good with his right hand and landed a lot of good shots also. It was a very close fight. Uh, we'd love to do it again. Um, but we'll, hopefully that's in the future. But um, I'm very proud of Manny. I thought he fought well. And I hope you all enjoyed the fight. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. Do you have a microphone? Kevin? Manny, I wanted to ask you about your right shoulder injury. I understand the condition was not allowed to take a shot. Can you tell us when you injured your shoulder and how often you were taking the shot? How it impacted you tonight not being able to take it? You know, um, this training, training camp, we, we uh, I thought, um, we are we are about to planning to uh, you know postpone or uh, just uh, it's been uh, two weeks I didn't you know train good because of uh, oh, I didn't use my my right hand I cannot use my right hand and and we uh, we plan we plan to uh, file and, and commission uh, uh, exemption for for the shot for numbing the, my 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 shoulder but. I, we respect the decision of the, the commission that uh, is not allowed, so we didn't we didn't get a shot. But you know, uh, two weeks before the fight and uh, one week before the fight, it's, it's my 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 shoulder is getting better, and better, but not really 100%, totally 100% um, uh, I mean uh, recover. But at least I can I can uh, I can uh, use it. But you know, something wrong.
we 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 need to uh, fill up the form. Uh, um, but you know, you heard the, the three weeks before the fight. I, you know, I skipped my training a uh, couple days because of that uh, reason, and, and we went to uh, you know uh, uh, MRI, and then uh, there's a. a a tear in my in my in my my right uh, shoulder. Yeah, and also the attorneys had filed papers with the commission early in the week, saying that he was taking medication for so shoulder injury. It was papers that he had gotten the approval of USADA, and we filed it with the commission. So the commission was well aware that Manny had a shoulder. No, the thing is, uh, he was told uh, Hook was another fire, and they, they collided our arms together, and he hurt his shoulder. And uh, but they think it, it was getting better and better every day. And uh, you know, we thought about at uh, one time, you know, like postponing the fight and so forth. But as as the weeks went on, it was getting better, and he was thrown really good in the gym. And I was happy with his performance, and he was doing a lot better sparring. And uh, I didn't think it was, I think he could get through the fight. And you know, I never want to put a fighter in, into a fight injured that badly, but I, I thought the progress was good enough, and uh, that's why we stayed with the fight. Uh, about two and a half weeks ago. I think it was a little longer, Freddie. Okay. And it wasn't a. a it, it, apparently, the doctors say it was an old injury. There's four something or other that connect this uh, to a. Uh, Kobe Bryant has had the same thing. Two were unoperated. Two were not operated. You know, they were bad, and two were okay. And but he had he had pain, and this is the same doctor that treated Kobe Bryant before each game. And until finally, when Kobe dunked the ball, he tore the remaining two. So, better than the doctors explain because I, I, I just know generally. Yeah. Manny, Manny, we know how much you wanted to win this fight. You talked about how much you trained, how much you devoted the time that you put into this fight. And we've seen you at moments after a fight where you're on the other side and it's a different attitude. Can you talk about right now? the honest disappointment as a human being that you have about losing the fight and also talk about the respect I assume you have for uh, Mr. Mayweather. You know, I, I'm, I'm very happy because of, of uh, uh, the result of the fight, even, even though, uh, I mean, you know, I cannot use a lot by my right hand, but uh, the fight is still, still good. I mean, uh, it's still there. But the thing is, uh, what we want to do is uh, we cannot do because uh, of my shoulder. Uh, I am speaking with Mayweather. I mean, um, he's uh, he's fast. He's he's he's, um, he's a good good boxer. And, I mean, you know, give the credit uh, to him. He won tonight. So, I mean, uh, he's proved it. Manny, the, uh, the fourth round was probably your, your best round. Why could you not have that kind of round more throughout the fight? The thing is, um, uh, on the third round, I already, um, you know, feel the, the pain in my, in my shoulder. So that's why uh, when, when I throw a lot of punches combination, and just, if you imagine I back off because, um, because um, it's hurt. So. <laughs> the thing. How much? How much do you think it's going to bother you that this fight you wanted so badly you lost it over the years now? Now that you're done with it. How much? How is this loss going to bother you? This is a fight you wanted so badly. Um, it wasn't bothering me that the loss right now because um, I, I fought a good fight. I did my best, and I think uh, the people are they're very happy because even though. I hurt my my shoulder. I didn't I didn't complain in, in the ring, and 
like that. But you know, it's it's, it's part of the game. I mean, uh, I don't want to make um, uh, uh, alibis or you know, complain anything about that. Now you watch the fight, and you watch Manny fight before. You see how many punches he throws with the right hand. You see him throw one right hook, right? And the jabs, he threw apparently 190 jabs, they say, and he landed 19. Now, um, you know, giving Floyd credit for being a great defensive fighter, something's wrong with that if your shoulder and so forth is operating correct. Manny, can you explain why you think you won the fight? I mean, I, I thought I, I, I thought I won the fight, and then uh, you know I have to review the, the the DVD now in the hotel. So if uh, really uh, I lost the fight because um, it's basically um, I heard him many times. Not not uh, I heard him many times and. We can see that, and in, in, if we watch it in, in replay, um, but he didn't get hurt me. How many times do you think you really hurt him in the fight? How many? Him? Like uh, three to four times. And, uh, you think I, that was enough to win the fight? Huh? You, you, you believe that was enough to carry the fight, win the fight? Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, saying that. You know, it's hard to say. Uh, right now, but uh, like what I said, I have to, re to review the, the DVD, the, the fight in, in, in my hotel. Yeah, my question for Freddie. Freddie, um, did, uh, did Manny follow the game plan? Uh, what's your overall assessment of the fight? Uh, he did pretty well. I mean, the thing was we were working on putting, on, putting him close to the ropes, using footwork to keep him coming and going, and yeah, I think it worked quite well. And I thought those flurries that when he had him on ropes were very effective. But, you know, we just didn't do enough of it. And uh, once he told me that the shoulder was hurt and he was having trouble throwing it, um, you know, it was difficult to get that, to those punches off more often in the fight. But, um, you know, again, uh, again, I thought it was a very close fight. I thought he did well. But um, I, I know he can do a lot better, of course. Freddie, Manny, you know, usually throws punches at angles more, and so then, at this fight it appeared to me that he was coming straight forward and, you know, squaring up a lot more. Is that part of a plan? Well, um, backing him up was part of our plan, taking charge of the fight, yes, and putting him on the ropes and outscoring him on the ropes was the big part of the plan, but we just couldn't be, be as consistent as we wanted to be because the shoulder did start hurting more. And, you know, the jab and the uppercut was okay, but the hook was a little hard for him to throw. Hey, Freddie, I was going to ask you, uh, Freddie or Freddie? Before the fight, you had said that uh, you thought Floyd's legs were going on him, but he, he moved a lot in this fight. He moved pretty well. How would you rate his legs in this fight from the last couple of fights? And also in terms of how did you think he, well, he fared defensively? I thought he ran very well. I mean, uh, you know what, when, when he wasn't like running the punches, he was just running and moving backwards, and I feel Manny should have won a lot of those rounds because he's the aggressor. I mean, but um, we didn't, it didn't go that way. Bob, to your right a little bit. I'll wave at you. Why? Who's calling? Where? Bob, I just wanted to ask how fair you think it is for people who spent $99 on this fight, or spent the money for these tickets, that you staged a fight with an injured fighter. You knew he was hurt, and you're saying that that was a reason why he was unable to throw one of his best punches. Athletes always fight uh, hurt. Uh, we felt uh, that uh, the uh, 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 work that was done on the shoulder during training would give him the opportunity to use the right hand. Uh, we were disappointed when in the third round the injury kicked up again, but this is always the case with sports, you know, you, you, a guy is injured in training, uh, he then uh, uh, 
deals with the injury, he thinks he's uh, conquered it, uh, and then he gets re-injured in the game. Happens in football, happens in every sport. Manny, over here to your left. Throughout the bout, uh, there were times that you seemed like you were hesitant of pulling the trigger. What was holding you up from doing that? Um, I'm hesitant to to uh, to be uh, more aggressive because it's only one hand. I just uh, I just uh, my right hand is just for pain, and then oh, only left hand I can use it. I mean. Uh, And it's hard to, to fight a one. I mean, you, you guys sort of fight yourself, right? And when you review the film, you'll see how infrequently... You'll see how infrequently you threw the right hand. Let's welcome the champion. Great fight. All the fans, all the media. <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for supporting this event. Um, I'm truly blessed to be one man. Um, I had a, had a brilliant game plan, uh, a, a remarkable team. Um, like I said before, before the fight, um, my dad's a hell of a trainer. Freddie Roach is a hell of a trainer. I, I don't take nothing away from Freddie. I don't take nothing away from my dad. When it's all said and done, it comes down to the two combatants. Um, Manny Pacquiao is still a champion. You know, um, he still has a lot left, and um, you know, I was a better man tonight. Um, more calculated fighter, took my time, had patience, and um, was working on you know countering and using and basically using the jab. Um, I think every fight played a major key. All, every fight was important to me, extremely important to me. You know, and but like I said before, before this fight, I still feel the same way. Um, my love, my love, and my passion for boxing is is not the same like it like it once was. But this is my job, and I got to go out there and be at be, be at my best when I'm doing my job. And um, my team, like <clears throat> I keep giving props to my team. I'm always gonna give props to my team. But you know, it started with you know it started with top, I started with top rank. Um, you know, I had other plans to do things my way, and. Um, Leonard, you know, Leonard LRB has been with me, I mean, almost 20 years. And um, <clears throat> Al Heyman, we work hand in hand. We communicate always. And we just had a brilliant game plan. And the ultimate goal was to make um, nine figures in, in one night. And, and that's what we did. Floyd, uh, Floyd of Miami was up here talking about how he had an injured right shoulder from training camp. And that it started really hurting in the third round. Did you did you notice that it looked like he had a problem in the ring? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer that question the best way I know how. <clears throat> I had injuries also going into this fight. And if he would have came out victorious, the only thing I could got up here and say, you know what? I got to show. I gotta be, I gotta, I gotta show respect and just say he was the better man if he beat me. Um, both of my arms was injured, both of my hands was injured. But, like I said before, I will always find a way to win. And, like, um, and, you know, um, it, it really doesn't matter who I fight, you know, it don't matter. I can, you know, just like when I fought Ricky Hatton, when I knocked Ricky Hatton out, after the fight was over, they still booed me. I still was screaming, there's, there's only one, Ricky Hatton. So that's what I'm used to. And you know, when I was in a fight, my dad was constantly saying, because you know, every punch that he throw, the fans would scream, well, his fans would scream and cheer and go crazy. So mentally, my dad was thinking the fight was close, because my dad was saying, you know, pick up the pace. But I knew in my heart that I was beating him. I thought I was beating him easy. You know, out of the 12 rounds, I had to at least give him three rounds out of the 12. But you know, a lot of times, he was applying pressure, but he wasn't landing any punches. But I was constantly keeping a keeping a job, keeping the jab in his face. But Manny Pacquiao is, is one hell of a fighter, and I see why he's where he's at in the sport of boxing. 
Uh, Floyd, Ken Miller with the Sentinel newspaper here. A couple questions. Your last three fights, did you make those fights with the two with Maydonna and this one with Pacquiao more difficult than they really had to be? Well, I'm a lot older. You know, I got to fight. It's always about we truly believe. What we tell, what we talk about in our camp is this. It's all about working smarter, not harder. I don't want to wait till I get almost 40 years old to start taking abuse on my body. You know, I want to be able to have all my faculties. I invested my money ext extremely well and good. Um, I can quit boxing today and I'm A-OK. -okay. Um, but like I said before, I'm, I'm blessed and Manny's blessed and he's, he's, he's one hell of a fighter. Do you anticipate, based on the allegations that Manny's been claiming along with Bob, team, as relates to his injuries, that you would fight Manny Pacquiao with him? Um, you know, I think it, it, it hasn't even been two hours, and once again, y'all throwing me right back in a battle. If I'm not mistaken, everyone was saying for years I was scared and um, Floyd will lose, and, I mean, all you guys said this, all, all the people that said this. Now, tomorrow when you write your story, I want you guys that, all you guys that said I was scared, and all you guys that wrote negative articles about me, you know, for years, for the last few years, you know, I try to keep myself away from negative publicity, you know, neg people write negative about me. Because people don't really know me. I'm a person that loves his family. I only want the best for my family. Um, I work hard, I work hard. I'm just an American dream. I worked hard to put my family in a great situation, but tomorrow, for all those that wrote bad stories about me, I'm gonna wake up early in the morning, and I wanna see y'all stories tomorrow. Thanks, Mike. Who's left out there for you? Um, Khan? Um, once again, <laughs> you guys go again. You go again. I'm not kidding. Let me enjoy my victory, at least. Let me enjoy my victory. Can I, can I enjoy my victory, <laughs> please? <laughs> Floyd, Floyd, John Saracino, congratulations. Thank you. You're one fight away from tying Rocky Marciano's undefeated record. Uh, presuming you do that, in September, why would you not want to break it? Hold on, one second. Take your time. You gotta drink that Warren Buffett drink, you know, he's a close friend of mine. You know, after a good championship fight, ain't nothing like a like a cold Coca-Cola. <laughs> we had a game plan. I know you're talking about Rocky Marciano. I think that I always wanted to do things just my way. You know, I didn't I didn't come into this to this boxing business or this boxing game to try to outdo anyone. I just wanted to be me, and I just really wanted to just do me. I never really wanted to come in this game to out, just, you know, like to come in and break guys' record. If it was gonna happen, it was gonna happen. And I knew, I used to always tell Leonard, when this guy first, when this guy left a six-figure paying job in Washington, Washington D.C. to come here and help me, he was only, when I was fighting, of course, I can't say top rank wasn't making sure that I was comfortable. At that particular time, I was extremely comfortable because I was a multi-millionaire at a very, very young age. So I'm not here to, I'm not here to bash Bob Air. I'm not here to talk bad about Bob Air. I'm a top rank. It started with the top rank. So I take my hat off to them, God, to, to, to top rank and the whole staff for doing a remarkable job, for helping me get to a certain point in my career and then letting me become my own boss. But Rocky Marciano is, he's one hell of a champion. He's one of the guys that paved the way for me to be where I'm at. Rocky Marciano, Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson. But you know, there's no different from Ali. You know, he called himself the greatest. 
and this is my area, and in, in, in my area, I'm TVE. One, one, one follow-up. Uh, you said if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, but you're the only one that can, can control that. So yeah, why but, don't you wanna do it? Or have you made up your mind definitely that one fight, one fight only, and you're done? As of right, as, as right now, <coughs> You know, like I said before, I'm only human. I can, I, I contradict myself. I always tell you, I contradict myself. I'm not perfect. I strive to be a perfectionist. That's no different from my dad when he was in the corner. My dad was on my ass. He was like, listen, your ass need to pick it up. I'm not liking how you're performing. You're, you're, you're doing enough, but you're not doing what I want you to do. Pick it up. But I know deep in my heart, deep in my mind, I was winning. But my dad was just going by the audience. He didn't want because you know he's been reading about they're going they're going you know he's been following the fight. I haven't been following the fight. What I did was I go on demand. I watch movies. I watch playoff basketball, and I stayed away from worrying about what the media says and uh, worry about watching my show all access, or watching any shows leading up to this fight. My whole focus was to go out there and just do me. And my dad was just in the corner. He was on my ass because he felt like anytime the guy threw a punch, they'll scream. So if he keep a pressure, he, he could swing a shot and miss, they'll scream. So he felt like the fight was extremely close, but I knew with me having experience at this level, the judges is not going by the crowd screaming, the judges is going by shots landing. And when it's all said and done, when my career is over, TBE, I don't want to be just known as the best fighter inside the ring. TBE it was, it's, it's not just inside the ring. I'm a calculator fighter. I make smart, it's just smart moves on the outside. I play chess on the outside as far as choosing the right people on my team. And one of the chess moves that I made was I, I got Alex a reason and I brought him over to my team because I know that he was a strong asset for Manny Pacquiao. I want to know a guy's weakness. My thing is this, I'm going to always put any fighter in discomfort, in the most under, uncomfortable position as possible. So that can put me, in, in, in that, and that's going to put me in the most comfortable position, and put him in an uncomfortable position. Life luck. Congratulations. Okay. That's Dave Mayo. I know him. I'm here. Congratulations. Uh, a couple of things about the fight. The, sh the shot he landed the left hand in the fourth round yes. kind of staggered you. But what, uh, relative to other punches you've taken, where was it? He, he hit me with a good, you know, he hit me with a, a solid, a solid shot. You got to realize, you know, with my career, early on I was extremely active. I was always fighting. Whereas now, you know, I take so much time off. Many just fought Algeria. And you know, the last time I fought, the last time I fought was September. When did he fight Al Algeria? I don't, I don't know if I'm calling the guy name on right. I don't want to disrespect him. So he just fought in no November. So he's a little bit, he's a little bit sharper than I am. You know, it's just like this. When you're take, when you're in a contact sport and you're always, you're, you know, you're always engaging in battle. You can take a shot a lot better. To whereas if I'm sitting off six, seven, eight months. When I get in the big fight and I get hit with a good shot, like, damn, it, it wakes me up. Like, okay, now I know where we at. There was that little moment in, uh, at, I think it was in, at the end of the 11th round where he banged his gloves together to try to kind of encourage you, and you banged your gloves back and jabbed it. When there's a little kind of an exchange between that, between fighters, where where do you, where do you think you had him? I knew I had him from round one. From round one. I, got, I came out there, I filled him out. I wanted to see his certain moves. You know, I want to see his jab, because if he uses jab, I'm gonna counter over his jab. If he uses jab, I'm gonna slide over and counter him with a right hand, or I can pull over his jab and hit him with a jab. It's just, everything is his calculated moves. I'm, ten, I'm uh, 10 steps ahead of any fight. Even like when he hit me with a, hit me with a, a, a real, real good shot, I took it, I said, just stay right here, you've been here before, you know what it takes, just wait, wait. He gonna shoot his low, make a miss, and then what I do is, Go down to his body, slow him up, and when I slow him up with the body shot, look down, watch, faint him, touch him with the jab. 
There are probably millions of people watching this who would say that maybe the only way you could top this is to lose. Is there any part of you that just is thinking about walking away before that happens? Um, once again, I was born a winner. I'm going to die a winner. Um, I don't really try to focus on winning. Like, like I said before, I was brought up within in my family, all we knew was to be first. And whatever we did, it's always about being first. Win, 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 that's all I knew. So whereas, what I install in my children is this. If you guys give me 100% and you guys don't win, you're a winner in my eyes as long as you gave me 100%. So I look at things totally different. What's been installed in my head from day one is still in me. Still feel the same way. This was just another day at work. There's nothing. I mean, no different from my, the guy I fought in my third fight. I feel the same way about this fight right here. I mean, I mean, you guys was the one that said this guy can beat Floyd, and you go look at the um, throughout the years. Floyd is scared. Floyd is a coward. Floyd is a chicken. You guys were all those stories. Tomorrow, and all I want you guys to do, I made you guys eat your words. And you know, I made you guys eat your words. So tomorrow, when y'all write this, tomorrow when y'all write them stories, I want y'all to say, the non-believers, Floyd Mayweather turned us into believers. Write that tomorrow. Hey Floyd, My congratulations. You have one more fight, so the end is near for your career. What will it be about doing this that you miss when it's all said and done? Um, actually, Kevin, I don't, I don't really think I'm going to miss the sport. You know, as far as, if I don't really watch boxing, I can tell you what guy is on, I can tell you what guy is on the rise once a guy come into my boxing gym and I see him, or I can watch a guy fight, but I don't really watch him. Boxing like that, you know. Um, at one particular time, I, I loved the sport of boxing. I wanted to go to every fight. I wanted to be at every boxing event, but throughout the years, I just lost the love for the sport. So, when you look in 2008, 2009, when you took your break and you had made it an announcement that you were called a little vacation, we call it a little vacation statement put out that you had retired. Did you miss it at that point after you had been on that vacation? Did you start to miss the grind and miss going to the gym and all that? I just think that the body needed to rest. I think I needed to rest. You know, um, at that particular time, Kevin, I think the body just needed rest. Sometimes my body just needs rest. No different from you as a writer, you know, with Yahoo. Sometimes you, you need to take a break and then you, you, you come back better. So, you know, I just needed, I needed a vacation. But, um, uh, something just took down. you know, the um, undisputed champion at Waterweight and WBC and WBA champions at, at Super Waterweight. So five belts and two different weight classes right now. But I think uh, Monday I'm gonna relinquish all belts. You know, um, Monday, you know, I made a decision in the back that my last fight may not be a championship fight. I'm gonna give up all the belts. It's still gonna be a 12 round fight, but I'm gonna relinquish all the belts um, Monday. Floyd, Floyd, you over here. Um, you, um, obviously you won, you dominated him, in, in, you know, technically. And um, I just wondered, they said afterwards that he had been refused a, an injection for his shoulder, okay, by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. That's by the by for now, but what I'm saying is, he was very left-handed in the fight. Would you consider a second fight with Manny Pacquiao? Because it was enormous, wasn't it? It was a massive global event. Um, only thing I want to do right now is go home and rest. All I want to do is go home and rest. I'm not thinking about Manny Pacquiao at this particular time. Um, we both made, I mean, we can't even put a number on, you know, I can't put a number on, I can't say what he has done, but for my team, you know, in the back today, for them to tell me I made 
2.8 or 2.7 million dollars for the minute was was the minute. You know, for my team to hand me a 100 million dollar check in bag is is remarkable. And you know what I'm saying, and I just want to talk about the things my team done for me, so I can let you guys know how we conduct and handle business. You know, before I even this week, the last four days, including with today, well, the last four days, my team, I made 25 million before I even got to the fight, and then my team, you know, after the fight, I, I was guaranteed 100 million, and then you know I still got money on the back end and other money that comes in. So we're looking upwards of 200 million. So I'm, like I'm, I'm blessed to be one man. I'm just very, very thankful. As, as, as most people have estimated, it's a kind of half a billion dollar fine this. Um, and it could be even more, given that the pay-per-view could be even bigger than anyone thought. But how do you get up for an even bigger fight the next time then? Because when I go in the boxing gym, <clears throat> and, and this is the truth, what I'm going to tell you guys, or everything is the truth, because I'm a realist. <clears throat> When I go to the boxing gym, normally, like, just say on an everyday basis, my driver, he drives me in a suburban truck. Every day I ride a suburban truck. Only time I ride my high-end exclusive automobiles is when I go to the boxing gym to motivate all the fighters that's under the Mayweather promotion banner to let them know, if I can do this, you can do this too. And that's why, you know, that's when I drive my expensive automobiles only to the boxing gym. But as far as going to the club and going out, no, not at all. You know, but, and I just sit back and think about Al Heyman and what this guy has brought to the table and what this guy has done for the sport of boxing and, and how we have worked together. You know, me, Al, and I mean, I'm saying Showtime, and CBS, and, I mean, it's just so many people that we work with on an everyday basis, how we came together and made so many remarkable things happen. And we, we fought in the best hotel in the world, the MGM Grand. I love this hotel. And I love the city of Las Vegas. So let's touch on Al Heyman. Everybody wants to know what did Al Heyman do and what did he bring to the table? Like I told you guys the other day when we sat down. I, I got you one second. I got to talk about Al Heyman. This, this very shrewd businessman that's a part of my team. When the big boy mansion got built, a mansion that cost eight figures, he said, Floyd, did we get the big boy mansion built? I said, yeah, we did. He said, is it paid for? I said, yes. He said, did we get the house in LA? I said, yes. He said, is it paid for? I said, yes. He said, did we get the 14 passenger jet? I said, yes. He said, when you wanted to be the highest paid fighter in the sport, did we do it? I said, yes. He said, when you wanted to be the highest paid athlete in boxing, did we do it? I said, yes. He said, what, what do you want to do next? He said, because you got, you got the book, you got Bugattis, you got everything. All your properties paid for you, the houses in Miami. And you got a seven-figure check that comes every month for the rest of your life. I said, I said, this is what we need to do, Al. I said, I gained plans to do, to do this. I said, I need nine figures in one night. I don't want to make 60, I don't want to make 60 million or 40 million, and then money on the back end, it eventually be 100 million. I said, when you come in the back, and actually, that's, that's not actually what happened. Actually, what happened is this. We had this game plan a long time ago, but everything was, was patient. We've been talking about the Pacquiao fight, and the Pacquiao fight it happened because of me. A lot of times, everybody, Pacquiao didn't call me out, I called him out. Now, we need to go back and look at the commercials when they was joking, oh, he, he wants to fight, he wants to fight. Everybody that wrote an article about me, something negative, I want you guys to go back. I want you to go back and clean these stories up tomorrow. You know, I'm, I'm looking for all your stories tomorrow. I'm gonna be up all, all day reading. Where we at?
Hey, yeah, SPM, yeah. what's up? Hey. Dan Raphael, what's up, baby? brought your check. Was it literally for $100 million even? The check got nine figures on it, baby. When somebody hands you a check for $100 million, you've been paid a lot of money over the years, 20 million, 40 million, whatever it's been. When somebody hands you a check for nine figures, I mean, what, what goes through your mind when you see that kind of all those zeros at the end of the check? I'm just, I'm thankful. I'm just very, very thankful. You know, I didn't do it by myself, you know? This dream started a long time ago. I didn't do it by myself. You know, everybody played a major key. You know, from my grandmother to my father to my fans and my family that believed in me first before I got to this point. So everybody played a major key for me to get to where I got to. When they give me a hundred million dollar check, but once you get to a certain point, you cannot, you can't buy nothing no more anyway. Once you got watches and you got cars that cost millions of dollars and you got a check, you got a seven figure check that come in every month. There's nothing you can really, there's nothing you can buy anymore. You got a private jet, you've been around the world, there's nothing you can really buy anymore. Only thing you want to do is continue, you want your team to grow, but what we, what, what I truly believe in is this. I don't, I don't teach you, I don't go fishing for you, I teach my team how to fish. And the thing is this, I'm glad that my dad is back on my team. I have one more question. Can you tell me about any other fighters you see who are either already established or maybe who are on the rise? Guys who you think that could become stars in their own right, perhaps step in to the, to the pay-per-view uh, realm and, and, and not necessarily like become it. you, but get up there and, and, and become the new face of boxing, if you will. It's, it's really, it takes, you know, fighters think that, they think that it takes just knowing how to fight to be, you know, I can fight so I can become a pay-per-view star. It takes a lot and to build a fighter to get to a certain level. You got to have, you got to know how to communicate. You got to know how to communicate. You got to have a certain look. And you got to have the right pieces. I'm just saying, and it's, it's really by, you got you to, I mean, you got to know certain people too. I mean, I mean, you got to have certain, you got to have certain connections. You gotta be patient. A lot of fighters want everything right now. I was that same fight. I wanted to fight every fight right <coughs> then and there. Put them in front of me, I beat them. But then, as I got as I got older and wise, I said, "No, nah, we can wait." Even like the Pacquiao fight before, you know, I was you know before I was guaranteed 50 million. I said, "No, nah, we ain't ready right now." It, it really wasn't that I wasn't ready. It was that top rank and Mayweather promotions and other people surrounding both camps couldn't get on the same page. But then, ultimately, we got on the same page and we were, we were able to make this like that. What we have? Floyd, hi Floyd, I have two questions for you. Uh, would you say that Manny is the toughest fighter you've ever faced? And the second one is that we want him to invite you to Bible study. I was going to say he's like, uh, Manny's... He's a remarkable fighter. He's an unbelievable fighter. But I can't just say that he's the toughest fighter that I faced. And I can't say he's the hardest puncher that I faced. But I can see why he's where he's at in the sport to where as it's just as little moves that he tried to make in a fight. But with me having so much experience boxing so many different styles. I can counter and, and calculate his moves. Did he, did he invite you to Bible study? You said he wanted to do that after the fight. Well, you know, um, a lot of people try to turn this fight into good versus evil. And I didn't really, I didn't really care to entertain that. You know, um, you know, I believe in a, I believe in a, in a good man just like he do. You know, I pray. I pray and I love my family, and um, you know, it's just that I didn't really appreciate everyone basically calling me, like, like 
This is the guy versus the devil. I mean, he's done a lot of bad in his life and no one is perfect. He's, man, he has made mistakes just like I've made mistakes. No one is perfect. But um, each and every day we, we both need to grow and try to become um, better human beings. Uh, congratulations. So when you say you were relinquishing your title belts, what is the reason behind that? Are you just trying to free up the belts of other fighters since you're retired? I'll let, I'll let Leonard answer that. Leonard, come answer that. It's about giving the younger guys an opportunity for us to get the sport. We've always been in the sport for almost 20 years, and there are a number of young and up-and-coming fighters, and you know, it's about giving other guys an opportunity. He has, he's accomplished everything in the sport, but more can he accomplish? If, if I could ask Floyd one more follow-up to that. Uh, by giving up the belts, do you have a, a certain... Does he, have a, does he have a certain vision for his grand finale? Not... What type of event? I think, I think he just answered that question. You know, fight hadn't even been over an hour ago. You know, you know he, let him go home and relax. You know, enjoy some time with his family and think about down, that down the road. Uh, over here, I just wanted to ask Mr. Mayweather why he's going to relinquish his titles. Like he said on Monday, why? It's Monday, probably in a couple of weeks. I don't know. I'll talk with my team and see what we, we need to do. But, you know, Why? other fighters need a chance. Get the other fighters chances. Other fighters need to get a chance. I'm not greedy. You know, I'm, I'm world champion at two different weight classes right now. I'm the undisputed waterweight champion. I, I got the WBC and the WBA at super waterweight. I got the WBO, the WBA, and the WBC at 47. Let, it's, it's time to let other fighters you know, fight for the belt. Even that emerald plus belt? Well, the emerald, this one's I mean, of course, you know, you always keep the belt. You don't get this belt. You know, this one be in my house in the frame. You know, I got the all gold one from the WBC, and I got the, the emerald one. And uh, I got the limited edition um, WBA right there. Um, uh, like I said before, it's just, you know, I'm just very blessed to be in this position, you know, and thankful for this position. Floyd, what was it like for you? Congratulations. Floyd, what was it like for you at the end of the fight when you knew that you had defeated Manny Pacquiao and for once and for all this whole thing had been put to bed? Um, I, always, I always knew that I was, I was the more smarter fighter. You know, um, I knew he was going to be tough. You know, I knew he was going to be a tough competitor. He, I mean, he's tough, you know, but his footwork you know, compared to my footwork, it's totally different. You know, when he come, I kept using the check hook, using the check hook, you know, using, using the jab and hook off. Then when he get close, you know, defense, then I tie him up, you know, roughhouse him. I got to do that with experience, roughhouse him. Take him back in the center of the ring, box him, box him, count him, touch him with the jab, just being smart. You know, using, I got a 72-inch reach. He had like a 67, so I got to use, and like I said before, it's always about working smarter, not harder. And we believe in, you know, like I said before, taking less punishment as possible. And other fighters got got baited, got baited into engaging toe to toe with men, and that's what he wanted. Floyd, what was it like when you you know you got defeated by Manny Pacquiao and for once and for all this whole thing had been put to bed? Um, I got um, thank my sponsors, the biggest and the best watch company in the world, and FanDuel.com. Go check the site out. And of course, you know, TheMoneyTeam.com. Um, you know, we're doing the revenue right now, 10 million a year with The Money Team. We appreciate you guys for supporting us every 
social media, every reporter, everyone from around the world that covered this event. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Um, thank and to all the Philippine fans. Uh, to, to all of um, to all the Philippine fans that supported Manny Pacquiao, continue to support him. He's one hell of a champion. He's one hell of a fighter, and um, he's, he represents the Philippines extremely well. Thank you, guys. With a free bet up to 50 pounds, bet your way at betway.com.